welcome to our online service. We're so glad that you found us online. Before we get started today, we have some announcements. If you want to receive daily devotions, listen to the podcast, or catch all the Sunday sermons and Tuesday teachings, make sure to download the For His Glory ministry app. It's a great way to stay connected. We're going to open with a time of offering, then spend a few minutes worshiping our Lord, then dive right into the sermon. But it's our prayer that you feel God's presence in a real and tangible way. We're so glad that you're here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, eternal lives of I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here to heal every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.
maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I course again we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are
Hey, good morning. How y'all doing out there today? My name is Amy Bauman. I'm a chaplain with For His Glory Ministry, and you are watching Truth in the Streets. This is our Sunday sermon online going out there all over the world, and I'm so glad that you're choosing to join us today, and I'm so glad that you found us online. We come together every week to do just this, worship our Lord, renew our minds, unify our faith so that we can become more like Jesus. And if you were watching last week, you'll know that we put that question out there, right? Why choose him? Why choose Jesus and follow him? And we had such an overwhelming response. Over 40,000 people somehow watched the service, whether it was for three seconds or the entire thing. And almost 10,000 people watched it in its entirety. That tells me that people are searching. That tells me that people are looking for something greater. And they were intrigued to know that there is someone that they can serve, that there is someone that can answer their questions, that there is someone that loves them. There is someone that came to this world to die on a cross so that they could have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. And that person is Jesus. So if you weren't able to watch last week, make sure you go back and find it. But we're kind of doing a part two today. Will they know? Now that we've chosen him, now that we say we're going to follow him, how will people know that we've chosen Jesus? I'm excited to be able to share this word with you today, to look at scripture, to talk about these things. But before we get started today, let's open this up with prayer. Father God, I love how you bring everything into your perfect timing. And I thank you for today's message and for your word and Holy Spirit. I ask now that you open up our hearts and our ears for what it is that you have for us. I pray for a fresh anointing that I will speak your truth with love. And I just pray, Lord, that you will help each and every person that's watching today, Lord, know what it takes to follow you. And that we can walk that out each and every day from this day forward. Thank you for this time. We love you and praise you and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we asked the question last week, why choose Jesus? With over 4,200 known religions out there, what makes following Jesus so special? Why does that make that religion different? Well, for one, we discussed that Jesus came into the world, sent by his Father God, our Creator, creating us in his image so that we could learn how to live like him. He left his kingdom and throne and came into the world as the poorest of poor, born in a barn to show us that money doesn't matter, that prestige doesn't matter, and that his life, his wisdom, his words that he had for us was for everyone. It didn't matter your job. It didn't matter your station. It didn't matter how much or how little money you had. He had something for everyone. And no matter where you live in the world today, or whether you have a job or no job at all, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're old or young, he's for you. He walked on this earth and encountered hardships and struggles like we all do, yet he did not sin. He showed us how to lean on his father, pray to his father and love those around him. And he taught people the truth. He healed the sick. He raised people from the dead and has commissioned his followers to continue to preach the gospel, his truth. And then one day at the peak of his life, 
He chose a cross. He chose to fulfill his father's plan to come and die on a cross for our sins, to cancel the plans of the enemy, to cut the curtain in half so that we could have full access to the father, to eradicate sin and cancel the works of the devil who is our enemy. A sacrifice that would be the end to all sacrifices. A sacrifice he made by shedding his own blood for all of us while we were still sinners. And because of that sacrifice, when we accept Jesus and when we follow him, we are offered a brand new life. We are offered forgiveness of sins. We are offered our heavenly home, where we get to live with Jesus for all eternity. We get to know that even though we've made past mistakes, even though we've sinned, even though that sin has stained our skin and our situations and our circumstances, even though it's a hard and challenging world, when we follow Jesus, We can walk on top of our circumstances. We can live the life that he had planned for us. We can live with joy and peace and love. We can know that we are sons and daughters of the Most High King, created in his image with a plan and a purpose for our lives. So our question for today is how will they know? How will the people around us know what choice we've made when we choose Jesus? Well, John 13, 34 and 35 spells it out for us. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Okay, that's it. Case closed. We get to go home now. It's going to be a quick sermon. But is it easy? Is it easy to love other people? I don't think so. Loving people is one of the hardest things we get to do while we're living in this world, especially when it's people we don't know. Strangers, neighbors, people at the grocery store, people that cut us off in traffic, people that talk about us behind our back, people that don't love us. And then we have families and children and spouses, and it takes everything we have to love them, no matter the day, no matter the circumstance, no matter what we're feeling, no matter the pressures of work and what we're, what we're going through. No, loving people is one of the hardest things we get to do. And yet that is what Jesus is calling us to. If you want to follow me, you need to love other people just as I love you. So how do we do that? Well, part of it is that we need to follow Jesus's words. We need to follow his life. We need to look at the Bible, our source of truth, and learn how to love other people the way he does, the way he loves us. We can't look at magazines. We really can't watch soap operas. We definitely can't watch, you know, movies and and things like that. That's created to entertain. And a lot of times that's not realistic on how you have to love someone in sickness and in health and good times and in bad on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, but also Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays. This is a commitment to love people the way Jesus loves us every single day. 
And with that, right, comes the challenges. In Matthew 10, 34 through 39, Jesus stated clearly what that means to follow him and, and what that could look like even when we do. He said, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Now, was that hard to hear? Sometimes... It's hard to hear because our lives are made up of our families, of our friends, of our children, of our our spouses. But what Jesus is saying is that to truly follow him, he has to become everything to us. We have to put him first. Because when we look at the world today and we look at ourselves, everyone follows something. This is the reason why last week's sermon got so much of a response because everyone's searching for something to follow, some kind of truth, something that they can look to and and try and stay the course. But a lot of times what people are following, looking to, are other people, friends, family, children. Some people are following popular culture. Some people are following selfish desires. Some people are following the latest trends, what's happening in the world. And so they shift their lives and they follow those things instead of following Jesus. We're reminded that we can only follow one thing at a time. Matthew 6, 24 says this, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. We can only follow one thing and we have to choose to follow Jesus and and realign our lives with that. So that means that there's God, there's my husband, and there's my family. And in that order, we all need to put God first. And with that, everything else falls into place. But doing that is not easy, right? Because we get caught up in the emotions. We get caught up in the feelings. We get caught up in the love. We get caught up in all these things that are part of our world. And that's why when you follow Jesus, when you say yes to Jesus, we can't do this in our own strength. This is why when Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples, I am going to send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. For a long time, I didn't quite understand that, right? What is the Holy Spirit? And that can be a challenging thing. But I guess first and foremost, you need to know that the Holy Spirit is God's spirit, right? There's the Father Son and Holy Spirit, and they are all one, but they are separate. And the Holy Spirit wasn't just for the disciples and the early church. The Holy Spirit didn't just hang around in the New Testament and then leave the scene. No, the Holy Spirit didn't leave after Pentecost. 
The Holy Spirit is here today. And when we say yes to Jesus and accept him into our heart, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the helper to help us walk that out every single day. To know what is the next step, to listen for his voice. This is why it's so important to make sure that we're quieting the noise of the world, the distractions of the world, so that we can hear his small, quiet voice. He will help us live the life that Jesus is calling us to. When we surrender our own lives, when we lay down our own agendas, when we have that in the right order so that we're looking to God first, following Jesus, his son, listening to the Holy Spirit. It's when we choose Jesus over everything else that we're able to live this out every single day. We can look throughout God's word, right? And we can see people that had faith. We can see people that chose to leave their families and their friends and follow Jesus. We, we can look at uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and read the, the testimonies from the disciples and see how they've left everything to follow Jesus and how they started the new church the early church, once Jesus had died and was resurrected and, and ascended into heaven, they went out and started the church. And they started the commission that Jesus gave them, which is passed to us today, right? To keep that truth going, to tell people about Jesus. So we can look at these men and women and see how they walked that out. But there's one man that comes to mind, one particular man, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and his name was Stephen. And he is an example of what that looks like, right? To walk that out every single day. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter six. We're gonna look at Stephen's story this morning. As you read, and if you read Bible commentaries and, and look at the notes in your Bible, nothing is known about the personal life of Stephen. We don't get to read how he got to this point when we pick up the story. We don't know about his parents, his siblings, or whether he had a wife or children. However, what is known about him is what is truly important. He was faithful. He was called upon because he lived a faithful life and because he followed Jesus. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen to be responsible over the distribution of food to widows in the early church. After a dispute arose and the apostles recognized that they needed help. See, the apostles needed to go and their mission was to go and get the, the early church going, to spread the gospel, right, to travel. And so they needed people that would rise up within the church and, and help with the church's needs. And so Stephen was considered a deacon. He was helping the people inside of the early church. He was also full of God's grace and power. And because of the Holy Spirit in him, because of Jesus in him, he performed great wonders and signs among the people. But as that happens, right? And people see these miracles that are happening. They see this person following Jesus and, and declaring his truth. Opposition arose. But the men who argued with Stephen were no match for the wisdom given him by his helper, the Holy Spirit. 
So the men decided to falsely accuse Stephen, labeling him a blasphemer and having him arrested. Do you think that uh, Stephen was really mad at Jesus when he was arrested? Man, I decided to follow Jesus and I'm doing what he wants me to do and now I'm arrested. Well, this was a really big waste of time. No, because the people that were in the early church, the disciples of Jesus, didn't see Jesus traveling this easy road, going through the towns, going through Jeru Jerusalem, sitting in a recliner, having a snack, watching television. No, Jesus was doing the hard work. Jesus faced opposition and, and criticism and critical remarks every single day he walked the path. And yet he was obedient to his father, God. And so the disciples were used to criticism. The disciples were used to hardship because that's the road that Jesus walked. And so Stephen was arrested and was before the Sanhedrin. And here Stephen gives his testimony in Acts chapter 7, which is perhaps the most detailed and concise history of Israel and their relationship to God of any in Scripture. I'm not going to read all of it today, but can you imagine this man standing before these people and he is reciting back to them their history and he's doing it in such a beautiful and elegant and concise way that they are in awe of this, right? And it's not him, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through him, giving him the words. Stephen was not concerned about his earthly existence, determining instead to stand firmly on the side of Jesus no matter the consequences, and he spoke with boldness. And he rightly accused Israel of their failure to recognize Jesus, their Messiah, rejecting and murdering him as they had murdered Zechariah and other prophets and faithful men throughout their generations. Stephen's speech was an indictment against Israel and their failure as the chosen people of God who had been given the law and the holy things and the promise of the Messiah. And naturally, these accusations, though they were true, were not received well by the Jews. And this is what happens to him in verse 54. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. They say that the stoning back in those days was incredible. It's not like the little stones that would be picked up and, and as you throw a pebble into a pond. These stones were like this big 
and they were pummeled at you and you were you just would stand there as you hit every single blow and I know for me as I read the story and I'm getting a little bit emotional I try to put myself in Stephen's shoes and I wonder if I would do the exact same thing that he did first of all testify the way he did in front of the court knowing that what could happen next could be my death would I stand the line and let every stone pummel me and in that action would I actually ask Jesus to forgive them for what was happening even as I spoke those words you see Stephen was willing to follow Jesus to set his life apart from the world and what they believed, no matter the cost. And when I read this story, I have to ask myself that and make sure that I believe that, that what I do each day, even in the good times, I'm willing to do even in the bad times. I'm willing to do this, walk this, preach this, say this, no matter what. No matter if one person, are, one person is listening or 10,000 people are listening, it doesn't matter. Whether I have people on my side or everyone against me, am I willing to walk it out every single day? Stephen's dying words weren't new. There was a man who had once upon a time said these exact same words. And his name is Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This was Jesus, right? On the cross, hands and feet nailed to the beams, a crown of thorns on his head. People were circling the cross, accusing him, saying, if you really are the Messiah, why don't you get down off the cross? And then, as he was getting ready to die, Jesus also said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He willingly gave up his spirit. Jesus did just like Stephen did. You see, Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever wants to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul or what can a man give in exchange for his soul Stephen followed Jesus all the way to the end, doing exactly what Jesus did, forgiving those who were persecuting him, who were killing him, stoning him, and he offered up his spirit to the Father. You see, following Jesus isn't the easy road. Maybe you know that today. But it doesn't mean that all of us will be persecuted and killed like Stephen was. But it is important to point out that there are people today that are being persecuted and killed for following Jesus. There are countless people out there today who are choosing to follow Jesus and are worshiping in their basements. There's an underground community of people that are worshiping Jesus away from the eyes of the world. They are not following government rules. They are not following beliefs of a family or community and what their friends are telling them. They are not following the world. They are choosing to follow Jesus, despite what their husband says, despite what their children say, despite what their friends and their family says. They're making a choice to follow Jesus. And this is not an easy road. Jesus tells us in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter through the narrow gate, 
For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few will find it. You see, the world will tempt us to follow along, join up, and be a part of it. I know I walked that out for 17 years of my life, living in like a glass house, wanting everyone to look in and see what I had and that I had it all together and that my family was well-dressed and that I was a, a woman of prestige. And the things that I had is what made me who I was, not what I believed in. And if you were to look at my life really closely, you would see that I was hanging on by a thread and that the illusion that I painted for everyone was an illusion. I was not happy. I did not have joy. I did not have purpose. And it was because I was following the world and what the world said I needed to be happy. You see, the world will tempt us to follow along, join up and be a part of it. But as believers in Jesus, we can live and physically be present in the world, enjoying God's creation and the gifts he has given us, but not of it, not a part of its values, not a part of what's happening. This is the meaning of being holy and righteous and set apart. We are not to engage in the sinful activities of the world, the ways of the flesh, and just do whatever we want to do because it feels good. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, when we set ourselves apart, surrendering our lives to Jesus and following him, you know what will happen? People will take notice. We are to live in such a way that outside, those outside the faith will see that there is something different about us. They will see Jesus in us and wonder, why do they have peace in this crazy world? Why are they struggling yet still have joy? Why are they kind to me when all I've been to them is mean? And my friends, I know this isn't easy. I myself have to check myself every time I leave my home because I'm either cut off in traffic or someone, you know, wants to be first or, or someone is, is talking about someone else or something over here is happening and, and I, you could be sucked into that. And no, it's like, Lord, please give me strength as I go to the grocery store. Please give me strength as, as I go to this meeting. Please help me as I have to work with these people. Let me not get sucked in. Let me love them the way that you love me. Jesus knows that this isn't easy. Jesus knows because he walked this world. He faced criticism every single day. He faced pushback. He He faced people that were unloving and unkind and didn't want him around. Jesus knew what we would go through 
And that's why we can't do it in our own flesh. We need Jesus. We need our helper, the Holy Spirit. That's why he sent him. And with him, we can step one day at a time, one step at a time, holding his hand. Maybe where you are at today, you're saying, Amy, this is too hard. I'm really struggling today. I'm really struggling following Jesus and, and walking this out every single day. And I would tell you that I know I've been there. I have my own challenges and my own journey that I am walking today, but I can't do it without Jesus. I can't do it without the Holy Spirit helping me, giving me wisdom, helping me have discernment to take the next step, loving people, not in my own strength, but because of the strength that Jesus gives me. I can't do it without him. I stand here today before you, not perfect, but living this out every day because of who is in me. And here's the thing. <laughs> the Bible tells us it's only going to get harder. If I look back five years ago, look at how much the world has changed in five years. And as we grow closer to the end, the enemy is going to fight us harder and harder and harder, causing dissension, causing fear, causing panic, causing people to fall away from who they are following. And he wants them to follow him. And let me tell you, my friends, that's a journey that's only going to take you directly to hell. When we choose Jesus, when we surrender our lives and live for him alone, setting ourselves apart from the world and loving all those around us, loving them in a way that Jesus calls us to love them the way that Jesus loves us. That's when we will know that we are his followers. And we need to keep holding on to Jesus, trusting in his promises, rebuking the devil, our enemy, and believing that while we're here, while we live here in this world, this is not truly our home. One day, one day Jesus is going to return and he's going to take us back with him to heaven. And that's where we are going to live for an eternity. And there will be no more tears. There will be no more death. There will be no more sadness. There will only be joy and peace and love every single day. He tells us when you get to the very end of the Bible in Revelations, he says this, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually or immoral, the murderers, the adulterers, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. Why choose Jesus? Because he loves you. Because he loves you so much that he came into this world 
and left his kingdom and his throne, came as a child, lived his life here, walking out what we walk out every single day, hardships and struggles and people that are going to hurt us. And then he died on a cross, a horrible death, so that we could have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. Choosing Jesus is saying, yes, I want to follow him. I want to serve him. I want to love him. I want to be like him. And I want to serve him all the days of my life, not just here in this place that is not my home, but I want to serve him in the next where I will live for an eternity. I want everyone to know it. It's not just a religion. Like the 4,200 religions out there that you could choose and pick depending on where you are at in your life and what your flesh wants. This is a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is a way to follow Jesus, to love him and be loved back with everything that he is. Why choose Jesus? Because he loves you and he wants you to serve him and follow him all the days of your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I am humbled at your perfect design and how when you created us, you wanted us in relationship with you. And even though sin came into the world and the brokenness, the plans of the enemy, everything that happened, the generation after generation after generation of sin and the consequences of sin happened, you, God, are greater. And you have been restoring us back to yourself ever since. And you did that with a cross. You chose your only son to come and to show us firsthand what it's like to live this out every single day, to live in this challenging world with challenging people. And no matter what comes our way, even death itself, that you showed us how, how to do it. You showed us what was most important. And so today, as we stand here, sit here, no matter where we are at in the world today, no matter what country, no matter what place, no matter our origin or our age, no matter if we're a man or a woman or a child, Lord, I'm asking you to give us the strength that we will receive your helper, the Holy Spirit. And that we can walk this out every single day, no matter what comes our way. That is my greatest prayer, Lord, that I will faithfully follow you until the very end. Even if I am like Stephen, giving out your words and being stoned by those around me. I pray and I'm thankful that you will walk with me and hold my hand every step of the way because you are greater, because you have promised me forgiveness of sins and eternal life and that I will one day live with you for an eternity. And that is what I cling to. That is what I hold on to. That is what I choose. And I pray all of us will choose that today. Let us feel your love in a real and tangible way. Let us experience your peace. Let us know without a shadow of a doubt that what we are choosing, Lord, we can see it. We can feel the love and the peace 
and the joy. And we want everyone around us to know, everyone to know that we've chosen you. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I pray that that was an encouraging word. I pray that it will help you as you take a step, each step of the way, every single day to choose Jesus and to follow him and that everyone around you will know it. Thanks again for being here and for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.